on generic birth engineering algorithm. For those who were not in the course a couple weeks ago, we kind of came up with this as a generic birth engineering algorithm for, for when you're doing that. This is a, a link in the wiki down here under RE course, generic RE algorithm. I just clicked on that. Where the first thing that you want to do when you're doing reverse engineering, uh, gather information. Find, find out all you can. Uh, this will help you to, to hone in on this is this is why I'm I'm analyzing malware. It's it's sometimes just cool to to reverse engineer malware just to kind of learn about it. But most of the time, it's going to be for for a purpose. You're looking to get something specific out of it, and whether it's because you have logs uh, from your system, from a system, from a network that are helping you to say, okay, I see this. What what else is it doing around this, or how did it do this particular thing? Uh, how is it being persistent, you can use those logs to help you to hone in on uh, what part of the binary to reverse. It takes a lot of time to reverse the binary. And that's why you want to have some additional information to hone in on. Strings never discount just taking a look at the strings in the binary. We learned that in the last class. That can be helpful. Uh, dynamic analysis, of course. Import address table can tell us potentially, if it hasn't been packed or obfuscated, what kinds of things the malware might be doing. Uh, and then based on that information, what you want to find out from it, uh, then you identify a function of interest in there. Where do I, where to start, basically. Once you've identified a function, then you take a look at the calls that are going on. Right, put, put the cursor on a call so it highlights the calls. Take a look at those to help inform you what's going on here. Um, identify the algorithms and data structures that are being used. Uh, Pseudocode it. Uh, rename functions, arguments, variables. Never discount renaming stuff as you come across. Even if you just think maybe this is what it's doing, rename it. Because when you come across it elsewhere, you then don't have to go through the process of um, so try or you might have to reanalyze it, but when you see a call to a particular function or you see like the arguments being used, those can help stand out in another function that you're analyzing that uses that information and that can further tip you off to what's going on. And you say, Oh, I was a little off on that, let me rename it, or yeah, that's exactly you know what's going on. It it flows in what this other function is doing. So definitely don't don't discount renaming um, the the generic variables and, and uh, function names as you analyze things. Uh, and then then based off of that, go to do continue. I did add in based off of the comments in the class two weeks ago. I did add those uh, those two steps five and six in there explicitly. Uh, I was pointed out that I was basically doing them without saying exactly that I was doing them. So, so I made it explicit, threw that in there. So just for reference. 